OK, how does a menu system work? Like when you think about a menu, how do they work? Somebody displays a menu and asks you, what do you want off, the, off this menu? You look at the menu, you say number three. They say, OK, they do the number three. You say anything else? You look at it, number five. You, they provide you with number five, whatever it is, and show you. Anything else? And it keeps happening until you're done. All menu systems work like this. And it has a common structure between all of them. OK? How does it work? It works like this. So you have an option. Now, that option could be a number, could be a letter, could be anything. Now, I'm going to use a letter for that. OK? So I'm going to say character option or selection, whatever you want to call it. Or let's call it selection. Character selection, OK? Then there is a gigantic loop, OK? There is a gigantic loop. And that loop carries all the weight of the program. While then you put something, selection being, say, x. So if the selection becomes x, I'll exit. All right? Oh, so while selection is not equal to x, sorry about that. So this loop keeps happening. It keeps showing something. It keeps doing something until selection becomes 0. Now, how do I get a selection? We know functions now, so I'm going to do it with a function. What you're doing over there is all in one file. But I'm going to show you how to do it in function. So I'm going to show you selection. Now, selection is supposed to be done with a menu, right? So I'm going to say set to menu. So a function is going to be there. That function is going to display a menu, get the selection, and give it to me. I'll write it later. I'm using my imagination. Let's say this selection is given to me. Now, depending on that selection, I have to switch in different ta to different tasks. So selection. And default will be selection set to x, which means, no, 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 sorry. My bad. Let the default be. We're going to talk about it later. So switch to selection. And then case, whatever the value break, case, break. So these cases are what the selection is supposed to be. Now, let's just show you what I mean. Let's say I, have an, or I want to have a data entry. Remember, we did a data entry for, uh, tell me, um, we had uh, something that calculated averages and stuff. So let's do that with a menu system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have an array of so many, so many doubles, let's say. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a menu for this. So if they want to add a value or they want to show the results. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a menu like this. So I'm going to say, first of all, my menu is returning a character because that's how I design it down there. So menu, and it doesn't receive anything. Then I'm going to show the menu, printf. So I'm going to say, if A is hit, then add entry. Then the next one. If uh, showing values. So if I want to show a oh, list, I'm going to put L for list values, list data or list entries. And S is going to be uh, display sum. And finally, X is going to be exit. 
And then at the end, I'm, I'm going to show a prompt and wait for the user to enter the value. And now I'm going to get the selection. So I'm going to say scanf. OK, whenever you, are, whenever you create a function that returns something, you have to have an instance for it. So I'm going to say character um, uh, option, another character for new line, because we need to know if they entered a new line or not. So I'm going to say scanf percent %c and percent %c, address of option, and address of new line. So they're going to they're going to see this menu and they're going to select one of those things and enter it. And I have to return that back. So if the new and then they enter, right? So if the new line is not equal to new line backslash n, what does it mean? It means they entered something wrong. If that new line is not new line, it means that either they put too many characters, too many stuff, or too less, or whatever. So it's not, it's not right. If it's not right, then what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say, if it's not equal to new line, they add too many things to enter. So I'm going to say flush keyboard. Where is flush keyboard? We already have the utilities. Include utilities.h. So I'm going to say flush keyboard. It means clear the garbage, make option something invalid. Let's put some, in, I'm going to put G as garbage. And then in here, I'm going to say return option. So what is, what is, what this function is, what the menu is doing? Menu says, enter A, L, S, or X, one of these and scans the option and the character after that. The user enters something. User enters W and hits enter. W and enter makes the second one enter. It means it's a character. I'll return the option, the W. Users enter something wrong. I don't care about it. My job is just to enter the values. I was not supposed to validate anything in here. If it's not backslash and it means user entered too many entries. I'm going to flush the keyboard and make option something invalid, garbage. I put G over there, and I return it. If user enters something good, even better. A, A is returned. So this menu returns one character, and that character is either something valid or invalid. Done. Now, let's go to our options over there. So I have the menu. So in here, it's going to say, Selection menu, so um, we're going to show some kind of a title in here. I'm going to say printf, or, or the menu is, menu is already uh, good enough. I'm just going to, um, let's add a new line before, that, before it too, so uh, it kind of have some space before and after. So it is showing a menu. I'm going to say first option is A. So I'm going to say over here, in case it is A, but user may enter lower lowercase or uppercase. So I put two cases. Cases in switch statement fall after each other if you don't have a break behind it. So if it's either capital A or lowercase a, it's going to come to this section, which means now I'm going to add an entry, right? So in here, I'm going to say add entry. So let's actually print it. I'm going to say printf. Add entry and go to new line. I'm not doing anything. I'm just I'm just writing what is supposed to happen. List entry, so it's either lowercase L or case uppercase L. Printf. I'm gonna say list of all entries. The third one is what? Is uh, displaying the sum. So again, the exact same thing. So if it's lowercase s or uppercase s, I'm going to say sum of all entries. 
And the last one is x. So if it's lowercase x or uppercase x, I'm going to say goodbye. Oops, sorry. And to make sure that the value is lowercase x, I'm going to make selection x. So I don't have to write over there if selection is this or that. I'm, I don't want to do that. So if either lowercase a or uppercase a, I'll make it lowercase so the selection finds out. And if it's default, what does it mean? User enters something stupid. Default means if neither, neither of those is happening. So in here, I'm going to say printf invalid entry. Invalid selection. Selection, try again. Now I can run this program. It doesn't do anything. It just shows if the menu system is working. So if I run this program, it's going to show the menu. There you go. It's going to show the menu as you're seeing and waiting for me to enter something. I'm going to say A, it's going to say add entry. Right? If I say L, it's going to say list of all entries. If I say S, it's going to say sum of all. So it's essentially running that and jumping to the end. So it, if menu se uh, selection is, for example, X, it comes over here, says goodbye. Selection becomes X and comes out. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to put over here something garbage. And hit enter, it's going to say invalid selection. Because I enter something garbage, it flushes the keyboard, sets it to garbage. If I enter only one thing, it's the same thing. So if I enter R, still it's going to say, it's tell me it's got invalid selection. If I put X, it comes in here, says goodbye, and makes the selection X. And because this condition goes false, it exits the program. So what you see now, what you see is the structure of any menu system that you're going to create from now till the time you die. That's what it is. All you need to do is to pr put the proper action in their cases. Now we want to do, we want to accumulate data. We're going to need to have a, a, a storage for it. So it's going to be double values. We'll put double values. Fine. So in here in main, I'm going to put over here double values. How many? I don't know. I'm going to put size. And I'm going to define it so I can change it as I go. So I'm going to say over here, define size, say to, well, I'm going to put three for now. They can, you can make it three million if you want to. OK? And then I need to know how many entries are right now entered. So I'm going to say integer number of, number of entries. And I'm going to set that one to zero. When program starts, nothing is entered, right? Now, add entry. What am I supposed to do? In that values, in index, what I'm going to put? Number of entries. Because number of entries is always the next index that you're going to fill in. So I'm going to say it's set to get double. It's in my utilities. I wrote it in the other class. It's exactly like get int. It's a foolproof get, get double. Go check the source code. OK? So I'm getting one double and put it in values. As soon as I do that, I'm going to make number of entries plus plus, which means now it's going to be one. The next time it comes, it becomes two. The next time, and if they choose not to enter anymore, that's the value. It remains that. So it essentially adds one. And not only that, I can actually test before it, beforehand. I can say if number of entries is less than size, then life is beautiful. I have enough space in my array. Do the entry. Otherwise, I'm going to say printf out of memory. So in this case, the first time they are entering number is 0. It comes in here. Add entry, it puts the value 0, it puts a double in it, add 1 to it. Break, goes back up, shows the menu again. They do the second entry, it becomes 2. They do the third entry, it becomes 3. They want to do the fourth entry, it becomes 4, less than size. No, it's not. It's going to say out of memory. It won't accept it. List of all entries, 
The good way of doing it is to call a function here, but I'm not doing it yet because we don't know functions and arrays. We'll talk about it when we come to pointers. But list of all items, I'm just going to put a, a, a counter here, integer i. I'm going to say printf, oh, sorry, 4, i set to 0, i less than number of entries, i plus plus, and I'm going to list the entries one by one. So uh, list the entries one by one. How do I do that? List the entries one by one. I'll go uh, printf. I'm going to show the row. Then in here, I'm going to say, uh, or I can actually show it like this. I can, uh, yeah, that's good. Percent %d. And in here, I'm going to put uh, percent %.2, let's say, lf. And I'm going to put values i. So I'm going to show the values one by one and go to new line. And perhaps after or before, uh, afterwards I can draw a line. So let's put 30, 30 lines over there with a, with a dash. So I'll draw a line. That's in utilities too. Sum of all entries is exactly the same thing. Copy that, paste it over here. All I need to do is to put it in, all, in sum. So sum plus equal values. I don't have the sum. I know. I'm going to do it now. Then I'm going to say printf sum of all entries. Entries, oh, all I need to do put 0.2 LF because I'm printing it up there anyway. LF, and then in here I'm going to show sum. And that's percent. And yes, let's draw a line to make it nice. Line 30 and, uh, and the dash. Now let's define the sum. Double sum set to 0. And we are done. We have ourselves a, a system that collects data and shows it. So we can run it. It works perfectly. So I'm going to say add, add entry. It's going to say add the entry. I'm going to say 34.56. Add entry again, 67 point something something. Uh, display entries. These are, oh, made a mistake. Let's see what we do wrong. Control C, uh, X exit. What did I do wrong? Get double values. Oh, I forgot to put the percent D over here, the row. I plus 1, sorry. I forgot to put the value over here. So that's, that's why it's printing it wrong. And over here, let's make it nice. nice. So I'm going to say printf. I'm going to actually show exactly which value we are entering. In here, I'm going to put percent %d, and in here, I'm going to show number of values. Let's do it like this. Now it's going to look better. One more time. Add entry. There we go. Now I'm going to put 4567. Add entry. 6789, garbage. It's going to say invalid selection. Try again. Uh, list entries. These are the entries that I have, one and a two. Display sum. It's going to say the sum of all entries is that, that. I should go to new line. I forgot to do that. I put exit. It says goodbye and gets out. Very simple and straightforward data entry. So let's put this one like this and put a new line over here. And we are done. Do you want me to walk through it, or it's you're gonna do it at home? Yes. Uh, Go. Uh, loud. You have to be very loud. Yeah, but I don't want to do scanf. I wrote a beautiful function. I want to use it. Okay. Why scanf? Now you can. And by the way, all these functions that I have written for you, you can simply add it to the bottom of your, like get 
int and get double and these things that we have written, you can just bring it to your workshop and add it to the bottom and use them. As long as it works the same way, why not? It's a foolproof one, why not? Instead of scan, if you can use get in, get used to reuse your code. You got to do that. But of course, you can use scanf if you want to. I wouldn't use it. I like to use functions. It makes the. Can you, uh, can you write, uh, for example, int x uh, equals scanf something? Of course not. So you can use it? No, scanf has its own way of doing it. It has address of stuff. You put it over there. Scanf, you cannot. <laughs> It's not wishful thinking, like, I wish scanf returned something. It does. Scanf returns a value. But you know what scanf returns? Scanf returns the number of successful, successful reads. So if you have a scanf, so you see this? It's going to return two if it reads them both. It returns one if it only one of them is read. It returns 0 if none of them was read successfully. It returns minus 1 if it reaches end of file, which we don't know what it is. So scanf returns something, but it's a completely different purpose. It's designed differently. Scanf always works like this, and we have to learn it that way. OK? If you want it to return, write a function for it, for heaven's sake. <laughs> write a function that does that. You can do it. It's cool. All right? OK. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? OK, I'm going to stop the recording. No more questions?